Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're gonna take a look on how I use projections to map graffiti textures over several layers of geometry. And first we're gonna talk about some theoretical aspects of this technique and then have a look from a practical standpoint. The way Cinema 4D handles cameras is that the aspect ratio you set in your output of your Cinema 4D render settings applies to all the cameras you have in your scene. So you can't have, for example, a 1 to 1 and a 16 to 9 camera at the same time. You can see that if I change from 16 to 9 to square, that the camera actually changes. Knowing this, all the projection cameras in the scene have to have the same aspect ratio as the camera you're rendering the scene with. If we assume that this, for example, is 16 to 9, we have to calibrate the image input for the camera to project it in 16 to 9, matching the exact field of view. To sum all of this up and make it really quick, if you have an image that is 16 to 9, let's say full HD, and you have a camera that is 16 to 9, you need to calibrate this camera in Octane to match it to the image because Octane thinks that every image input is always square. To set this up, let me explain it to you with this very simple testing. As you can see here, we have this very simple polyplane camera and a material. When we move set camera, you will see that this texture grid moves accordingly to the field of view of it. When we go to the node editor and take a closer look at the material, we can see that it basically operates this projection with an image texture node, a transform and a projection node. Taking a closer look at the projection node, we can see that it's set to perspective and that there is a camera link to it. This means that we project the texture through the camera's field of view. We also have to set the position to world space. If we take a closer look at the transform node, we can see that it's set to 0.5 on the x-axis and to 0.28125 at the y-axis. And you might wonder how do these values make sense and it's actually quite easy. The 0.5 of the x-axis are measured from the center point of the field of view from here, going 0.5 in both directions, positive and negative. So we have 0.5 from this point to this point and 0.5 from this point to this point. This means that the 0.5 of the x-axis has a total scale of one. This principle works for every aspect ratio and knowing that we always have 0.5 for the x-axis, we use it to calculate the exact value for the y-axis as well. And we do this by dividing 0.5 from the x-axis through the aspect ratio of our camera, which in this case is 16 to 9. So if you calculate 0.5 divided by 1920 times 1080 equals 0.28125, which is exactly the value we have for our y-axis here. This pretty much sums up the theoretical part behind this projection magic and now we have a closer look at the practical aspects. As you can see, I have part of the original artwork here containing a pipe layout, some building, a few AC units and posters. And you might have noticed that there aren't any crazy texture setups here. I chose these simple RGB colors so we aren't distracted by huge node trees and can focus more on the projection part. When we inspect the materials that are used in this scene, we see that there are four of them. One for the posters, one for the cables, one for the building and one for the SE units. When we want to put graffiti over them, we need to put them into a mixed material and multiply the graffiti over it. The first step to do this is opening the node editor, get the active material for our building and drag in an octane material and a mix material. We then also add an image texture node and link it to the amount of the mixed material, then link the new octane material into material one and the building base into material two. And this image texture node will hold the alpha for the graffiti later. But first we use that test image I showed you in the scene before. This way we see if the image texture is correctly calibrated to our camera. The last essential nodes we add are the projection node and the transform node. And as showed before, we change the projection node 
mode to perspective, the position to world space, and link the projection camera to the projection node. In the transform node, we set 0.54x and 0.28125 for the y-axis. We then link everything to the image texture node. And when we now use this mixed material and apply it to our object, we should see a working result. To eliminate the tiling from this texture, we go to the image texture node and set the border mode to black color. And the biggest part should be done now. Now I can render the projection camera, like we see it here, and load it into Photoshop as a guide for my graffitis. Now we discovered something that we couldn't see when we used the test image and it seems that the image is flipped by 180 degrees. To fix this we go into the transform node and simply type 180 into the z-axis for rotation and we should be good. Knowing that this projection works we select the hierarchy of the image texture, select hierarchy and then we copy it. Now we can paste it into other mixed materials we create for every set of geometry we want to be covered by the graffiti. And that's it. We now see that we have our graffiti covering all the geometry we wanted and didn't have to use any UV layouts or shitloads of textures to make a complex layout. I hope you liked it and see you next time.